You've unlocked a round table. Welcome to the Lost Level Roundtable discussion of Bridge of Spies. With me, as always, is Alex. Hello. And with all of our roundtable discussions, we kind of changed the format a little bit. Uh, they are going to be non-spoiler. Up until a point. At the very end of the podcast, we are going to go into the spoiler section, but we will warn you. So this first review portion is non-spoiler. So please, uh, you know, listen, hang out, enjoy, let us know. Uh, what you guys think of that, and then uh, hang on for the spoiler section, and then we'll be able to talk a little bit more in detail about the plot development or anything like that in regards to Bridge of Spies. Okay. That being said. All right, Bridge of Spies is basically a... This one is based on a true story, Christopher. Finally! We get it based <laughs> on a true story. Uh, this is the story about uh, Tom Hanks, who plays an insurance lawyer, who is given the task to represent a communist spy who was captured in America and represent him in court. Um, and then events unfold to the point where they have to negotiate that spy for uh, some American citizens and uh, one of our uh, uh, military personnel mm -hmm. to save. And this is this insurance lawyer's role throughout that process. Yeah. Uh, basically, yep, yeah, exactly. Uh, so this is during the Cold War, obviously, where uh, Russia and America are very much at odds. This is the old school communist Russia, not I mean, this is Soviet Union. Yeah, this is this is hardcore USSR. So uh, that's when we didn't get along, and it's kind of. I was thinking about this when we were watching the movie. It's it's just such a different America than what we kind of live in today. It's almost like a forgotten element where mm. you don't necessarily think about that because, like, uh, they definitely <clears throat> took the time to, to show that the kids are prepping for, like, a, atomic war. And they're they're showing this stuff, like, happening oh, yeah. in class because that was really what was happening during that era. I'm trying to think. There, there was this movie I watched on Netflix um, that was just, like, a collection of all that type of stuff. And, like, it, it was... Kind of like a documentary, but I mean, there was no commentary on it. It was just like all these videos of um, the the prep for nuclear war and stuff like that, and like the effect it had on America. I'm trying, I wish I could remember the name of it, but it was yeah really if you, interesting. If you think about it, we'll we'll add it to uh, the <clears throat> summary section of of the podcast here. But yeah, it it's definitely such a different time in in, in our country. That we had to worry about that stuff. It's almost like this forgotten stuff. Because now you, you you don't think about that. You're not necessarily thinking about that type of war. No, uh, well, I mean, now it's it's people trying to prep for terrorist strikes and shit like well, that. Yeah, but then it's also such an economical war now. Like, the way to really hurt a country is to cripple them economically. You know, you can, mur right. you can murder, you know, thousands of people. But to really cripple a... a, a civilization or a, a country you'd have to do it like that it's you know hacking into to, to their lifelines and stuff so it, it's just a different era i guess so i, I would just I, I was kind of really appreciative of just looking back at that time like shit man that stuff really happened like that's crazy stuff so uh we were trying to spy the the russians all the time they were like trying to spy on us and just huge espionage type of thing we had these U2 planes um, come flying around, just taking surveillance photos the whole entire time. Oh, so it wasn't the band? No, not oh, not, okay. not not the band. Um, okay, and really quick, that movie was called Atomic Cafe. Oh, okay. All right, sorry. Go ahead. So then check that out. <clears throat> but yeah, it, it's just... Uh, I actually thought that... I, I, I was captivated from like the moment on. Like... I like Tom Hanks a lot. I love Steven Spielberg as a director. Oh, God. They do good jobs. Yeah. And, and, and just them together, I was just totally into this movie, like, right away. The acting is great. The scene, the scenery is oh, perfect. They they do a great job with setting up the air. Like, this this is a very good period piece. Yeah. 100% agree. with, And it just... I, I'm so just... I guess when I was watching the movie... I started thinking about like this is a Spielberg film and this just reminds me of why Spielberg is Spielberg like you you see these simple scenes and there doesn't even have to be a a 
a dialogue in that scene. You can just see the emotion off of the person just looking at another person or something simple like a a, a person looking through He's good with subtle a window. Yeah. And then capturing that moment and understanding everything that needs to be said in that moment without a single line of dialogue. I love the way that he films that way. It's like it, it makes me like look at other movies like, man, why can't every movie be like that? Where I'm getting all of this information, not from an over the top like uh, voiceover or somebody giving me all this expo- exposition through one conversation, where I can just get all of this atmosphere and get all of this type of stuff in different ways. Yes, they're not overwhelming you with dialogue. It, it's he's very smart about giving you inf- the information you need in. The best way possible. Yeah, and he doesn't have to beat you over the head with it. He'll give it to you in, in different ways. Like those first scenes when you're actually seeing, like you know, uh, the 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 Russian person who's being accused of spying, mm-hmm. just watching him paint. You know, you're you're seeing like just him on a park bench or whatever, <laughs> and you you're just you're taking in all this information <laughs> visually, but your mind is processing all of this. And you're getting all of that information and data that you possibly need. You don't need somebody telling you exactly what's going on and beating your head over, the, uh, beating you over the head with it. Right. So that's why I really appreciate how Spielberg is when he turns the movies. And I like, I was watching, like, damn man, I miss, I miss seeing him like doing some directing because it, it's, yeah, it, it's it's, it's a nice experience for sure. I I, I enjoyed it obviously. So, um, so yeah, you kind of touched on the story. What, what else do you guys you want to touch in the non spoiler section here? Uh, do you want do you want to go into a little bit of uh, the characters? Well, we, yeah, we can go into the characters. I mean, Tom Hanks' character is a very interesting one. At that, I mean, he's this just very clever insurance lawyer who has just a very strong will, and it's it's kind of humbling to see a person like that. Yeah, he, he he understands that the Constitution comes first. So he's a straight laced, you know, like he he's by the book. You know, he doesn't want to bend and try to work around the law as so many lawyers might want to do, especially given circumstances of the Cold War. Right. And you kind of just have he's, this person who's perfect. Right. And he, he's doing his best to try to show why the American way is a great way. Because he's, they're giving this, this spy a fair. He's at least trying to give the spy, the spy a fair shot, right? And he's he's met with a lot of adversity, unfortunately. Yeah, definitely. You know the other parts of it too that I I liked was how it, it's like kind of like in the same timeline, but it's jumping around into the like the different things that are going on. Like you'll have the trial, and then you'll see like. Um, a different viewpoint of it you'll you'll see uh like the youtube pilot going going off and getting ready to prepare going back to tom hanks like the way that it bounces around in the same type of like time yeah is it's beautiful it's it's a really great storytelling mechanism that really works in this yeah movie. it's not like they're they're front loading all this tom hanks story and then like and just shoving all of this youtube pilot like straight in the middle and just kind of you know creating a disjoint story it's it's very it's, it flows it it's inter, it's weaved very well yeah it's seamlessly intertwined with each other <clears throat> that ma- makes makes pacing not an issue mm-hmm. you're kind of just like okay this is all going on and it's seamless and it works and uh i i enjoyed that and I, even when they introduce the the student it's 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 not this long process of introducing him you you see what he's going through and you see what happens to him and you get his story in a very quick, bite-sized manner. Yeah, like he, at first you see him and you don't necessarily know what's going on with him. You're like, oh, what's going on with this guy? And then you 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 find out like, oh, okay, that's kind of you know. That's and, and they're able to give a lot of backstory of what he was doing there in a very short amount of time. You know, he he's he's trying to get this uh, person and her father out to the the non-communist side of Berlin. Yeah, they wanted to escape the east for sure. Um, so Tom Hanks is working to try to make sure that the, the potential Russian spy played by, uh, damn it, what's his name? Uh, Mark Raylance, uh, he plays Rudolf Abel, 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 yeah, Rudolf Abel. And 
I really liked his performance. Yeah, what what was he in? Like I've recognized him. I can't figure out. What... I couldn't think of it either, but I know I wanted to look it up after the fact because I thought he was great. Oh, he has such a fun character. <laughs> <laughs> he's always like, "Are you worried?" Well, should I be? Like he's Will it just help? yeah, yeah. He he, very good character, very well written, and you know, it's once again just kind of a a a strong person, you know. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it just overall, I really, I really enjoyed the film. I, I think Very that much. it was it was a, a really good movie, solid movie, and something that I, I kind of, not I, I, I don't say I, I don't want to say like I, I compare every movie to this movie because I mean it's not that good, but at the same time I look at the quality of the the work. Mm-hmm. I look at like I, I could see I see what a strong script, a solid director. Someone who's capable of giving me visuals uh, and giving me story through those visuals. I see solid acting by obviously Tom Hanks puts in a solid performance in this. Um, as we kind of just talked about, um, the Russian spy is absolutely amazing in this movie. There's great characters in this that you kind of just really enjoy. Yeah, like even I mean, there's just tiny things that are in. They don't spend a lot of time, but it's enough to flesh out the characters and who they are. Like, uh, the, the whole kind of joke between uh, Tom Hanks is there, his daughter, and his psychic, or the person that's helping out in uh, the legal oh, matters. Yeah, okay, yeah, so like this. Like, sec- just tiny stuff like that. It's like, it, it's fun because it gives these characters life. Yeah, like, it's completely believable. You're not disjointed from, like, oh, okay, well, now he has to go meet his family, and the family is just kind of there. You know, they feel like it's like a living environment that you believe in that you're kind of just sucked into and you're not taken away from it. Mm -hmm. It, Like with so many often times where you get like certain characters who just stand out so much, it takes you away from everything else. But everything in this movie kind of just fits together flawlessly to the point where you're you're sitting there the whole entire time and you're not disjointed from it. You're just in the, the, the Cold War. Mm hmm. You know, you're 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 experiencing the Cold War through a, a, a Brooklyn lawyer <coughs> going to to uh, Germany and having to deal with An insurance his... lawyer. Like this isn't even like his shtick. This isn't his deal. Yeah, and and having to go to to a, a foreign land where they don't really like Americans at this point, and he has to kind of deal with that shit. So tensions are a little bit high, and you're like you're nervous for his character, and I think that's great, great work. Oh, very. Very good work, solid work. So, uh, overall, what do you think? Uh, it's a really good movie. Uh, definitely worth your time. I mean, look, just like you, I kind of find the the whole Cold War era fascinating, and all the political intrigue and everything like that. And I think this really shines a good, a an interesting light on it, and uncovers a lot of things. And look, just you know, masterfully done. Very good movie. So you recommend it? Yes, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I also recommend it. I, I would say definitely check it out in th- uh, theaters. This is going to be something that's going to be talked about uh, come award times, I'm oh, sure. Oh, obviously. Um, but yeah, it, it's a it's a great period piece, I guess. They they really captured the, the Cold War very well. Um, so check that out. Solid performances, solid direction by Spielberg. And uh, so how can we reach you? Also... Again, hang on. We'll talk about it a little bit in spoilers uh, in the section after we talk or say our goodbyes. Yeah. All right. So uh, you can follow me on Twitter. My name there is Alex Sandberg, A-L-E-X-S-A-N-B-E-R-G. Or you can email me directly at the website, alex at lostlevel.com. What about you, Chris? I'm on Twitter. Uh, it's at Calm Intensity. I also have an Instagram, which is Chris's Calm. Uh, you can email me at the website, chris at lostlevel.com. Uh, we have all of our social media in the upper right hand corner of lostlevel.com. Uh, it has all of our social links there uh, Twitter, YouTube, Facebook. We even have an iTunes. Everything. Please uh, you know, give us some likes, give us some recommendations, let everybody know. Uh, we really appreciate that. So uh, hang out for the spoiler section, and we'll talk to you guys soon. Spoilers! Spoilers! <laughs> All right, so there's really not that much of into like getting into it. Like, um, it, it's not as juicy <clears throat> as like, holy shit! No, I can't believe everybody died. <laughs> no, uh, no, no spoilers or anything like that. So this will probably be quick. But w- w- what do you think? What, what else do you want to further discuss that we couldn't talk about? 
non spoiler esque. Uh, well, I'm not sure. I I would say you know how much his family did not know what was going on, and how he was just like, oh, I'm going fishing, and then he's just gone for a long period of time, and just kind of returns or like, oh, you did this? Like, he's doing this like so little fanfare, and once again, it just it just shows the the strong will of that character yeah it, it's not him trying to be like a press hound by any means no. it's just like i have to go do this because this is the right thing to do right well and even to to that end you know talking about the press you you see the the shift in the public opinion of him from beginning to the end where first he's he's uh representing this spy this russian spy accused and his face is in the paper, and people are looking at the paper with his face on there and look up at him and just give him these, these mean glares to the point where at the end, his face in the paper for getting these American citizens back and the, the admiration he gets from there. So I loved that scene. Because like the, the first one or the second the, one? The second one, because like it, it, also, it does that where it has that callback. Then it's also that second callback to when he's riding the train in Berlin, and seeing some people trying to jump the the wall or the and you fence, see those kids jumping the and fence, you see yes. people getting murdered, and he's like, "Holy fuck, what the hell is happening?" And then later on in the movie, you have a very similar scene where he's riding the train. In yeah. retrospect, again, no dialogue. You're getting all of this great information just from watching him look out a window. Yeah. On the train and seeing these kids jumping and seeing the differences between a communist ruled country versus America and freedom. Mm -hmm. And just seeing those two things in, in the movie was an amazing bit of uh, cinematography that I loved. Um, and then again, he's reading the paper, he kind of looks looks down and he sees this woman staring at him because she recognizes him and it's a completely different experience. Correct. And uh, yeah, man, I that's why it blew me away. Like, man... Spielberg is such quality, man. <laughs> like, holy shit. And then even at the very end, the very last scene where he, he he's so tired, he talks about just wanting to lay in his own bed. Right. And, and then he finally just gets home, <laughs> puts his shit down, <laughs> and goes and lays him in his bed. And then his wife is downstairs on TV, realized like, where he was actually at, goes upstairs. Again, no dialogue. He's passed out on the bed. And you just look at her admiration for, like, this is the man that I love. Mm -hmm. And it's just such... Good. <laughs> it's, oh my God, I but love I that mean, shit. Even in the the epilogue, they go on to show tell even more that he did with with uh with Cuba, right? And mm -hmm. how he 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 able to negotiate like thousands of people's lives. I, say, I think it was like nine hundred or something. Was it nine hundred? I think it was like eleven, like eleven hundred or something were captured. Oh, or being held, and then I think he released like nine something. Well, whatever. A lot of people. We're given freedom because of him. And that could be like a whole different story. That could be a whole nother movie, possibly. Bridge of Spies 2. Oh my god. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it, it's... It, it was just an interesting story. It easily could have been... In the hands of a different director, I think that this movie would have not nearly been of what it was. Could have been very ham-fisted. It could have been ham-fisted. It also could have been like a pacing issue because they're... they're there's a lot of lulls like you're kind of just going through like you know some dialogue stuff that's not really exciting mm -hmm. it's important to the story but the way that it's filmed the way that it's like inter intertwined with other things it works and it keeps you the whole entire way <laughs> right. there could there could be a, this movie in a different hands uh, in, in the hands of a different director it could easily have been lull issues kind of like what we talk about in a lot of our reviews um, where the pacing is just all off because right. they, they do Tom Hanks' whole entire mini arc, then they go skip to the pilots in the separate one. And, like, they could have done it like that, and then it would have been all over the place, and you're kind of bored with it. But the way that it's filmed, the way that it's shot, it's just, it's just gorgeous. And I, I honestly, I love it. And it's based on a true story. Yeah. And I was kind of surprised that there was a lit literal bridge of sp spies where this was being held down. I'm like, oh, they're actually doing an exchange on a bridge. I I guess it's literal right now. <laughs> I like I I thought I thought it was really interesting how they use like back channel stuff, <clears throat> where it's like, hey, we you know Russia has our U two pilot and then we have a, a Soviet spy, so we're gonna use a, a false family in Germany, to send a letter for them to try to open a back channel type of thing, and I th I really thought that was interesting. 
sorry and and then uh that it was just the way that everything's handled because they can't officially say yes america is officially talking to russia and and trying to do this they have to do all this back channel shit Mm -hmm. which you know probably does happen i mean let's not kid ourselves it's probably still happens to this day yeah so that that was interesting and that was fascinating to me so thought that was awesome um what else you got anything oh i think that's about it okay I guess that, that's the end of our spoiler section for Bridge of Spies. Obviously, go see it. We we really enjoyed it. If you like Tom Hanks, if you like Steven Spielberg, this is a no-brainer. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Very good movie. Go check that shit out. All right, man. Uh, talk to you guys soon. Bye.